In this video, we're going to take a look at some of the fundamental trig identities. The first identities we will look at are the reciprocal and quotient identities. Hopefully these are familiar to you already. So sine is the same as one over cosecant or cosecant is essentially the reciprocal of sine. Secant and cosine, again, are reciprocals, so secant theta is the same as 1 over cosine theta, and cosine theta is the same as 1 over secant theta. Cotangent and tangent are reciprocals, so if I take cotangent and flip it over, I get tangent and vice versa. And then, of course, there is the infamous tangent is the same as sine over cosine, and cotangent is the same as cosine over sine. Let's look at a quick practice as to when I might use this. Um, I'm going to do a more comprehensive practice at the end where I actually would use this, but this is a good practice. Um, one way to think about this before I even use my reciprocal identities is again, if theta, if sine of theta, sine being opposite over hypotenuse, if sine of theta is 15 over 17 and cosine of theta, which is adjacent over hypotenuse is 8 over 17, then this is what my right triangle looks like. And we haven't really learned all about the right triangles yet, which we will in just a little bit. But this is a good visual in case you're already familiar with that. But if you're not, we don't even need the right triangle to figure these out. Tangent of theta is sine over cosine. So to find tangent of theta, I'm simply going to take 15 over 17 divided by 8 over 17. Those 17s will cancel, which gives me 15 over 8, and that is tangent of theta. What is cosecant of theta? Cosecant of theta, if you'll recall, is the inverse of sine, and so sine is 15 over 17, so it's essentially like 1 over 15 divided by 17, which is the same as 17 over 15. So those are my two solutions. Now, why did I bother drawing that right triangle? Because again, tangent theta, and we'll review this, I believe in the very next video, tangent is the same as adjacent, I'm sorry, opposite over adjacent. And so if I look at opposite over adjacent, I get 15 over eight. And then again, the same thing for cosecant, instead of sine, which is opposite over hypotenuse, it would be hypotenuse over opposite, which would be 17 over 15, which is exactly what I got. The other identities you should be familiar with are the Pythagorean identities. Sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta is equal to 1. Tangent squared theta plus 1 is equal to secant squared theta. And 1 plus cotangent theta is equal to cosecant squared theta. I think I forgot a squared when I said this one, but you get the idea. These are the Pythagorean identities. Let's take a look at a practice question where I can use a Pythagorean identity. So say I'm given that secant of theta is equal to radical 11 thirds for the domain of 3 pi over 2 to 2 pi. And I'm going to use the Pythagorean identity to find tangent of theta. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to ignore this until we get to the end of the question. So I'm just worried right now about secant of theta is radical 11 over three, and I'm trying to find tangent. So here I can see I have a Pythagorean identity that equates the two. So I'm going to say that tangent squared theta plus one is equal to secant squared theta. Now, hopefully you know that secant squared theta is exactly the same as secant theta squared. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace secant squared theta, I'm sorry, secant of theta with radical 11 thirds, and then I'm going to square it. So I have tangent squared theta plus one is equal to radical 11 squared is 11, three squared is nine. I'm going to subtract one from each side and if I subtract one, that's the same as subtracting nine ninths because nine ninths is equal to one. So that gives me two ninths. And then if I take the square root of each side to find tangent of theta, tangent of theta is either plus or minus radical two over three. Now I promised we would come back to visit this situation. So 
I know that I'm looking for a theta that's between 3 pi over 2 and 2 pi. So if I think about that unit circle, remember this was 0, this was pi over 2, this is pi, this is 3 pi over 2, and so and then of course this would be 2 pi and we would keep going and going and going. So what I'm looking for is a value here in this quadrant. This is the fourth quadrant. Now in the fourth quadrant, my x value is positive and my y value is negative. So if I'm dealing with a tangent, which is of course sine over cosine, then I'm going to have some positive value I'm sorry, sine is negative. So some negative value divided by some positive value, which is going to give me a negative result. So what is my answer? That tan theta is going to be negative radical two over three. Again, negative because of the location. Let's look at one practice again, where we're going to put this together. So if I wanna simplify this expression, one minus cosine squared theta is equal to cosecant I'm sorry, times cosecant theta, and I just want to simplify it. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is look at this relationship. Sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta is equal to 1, which means by some algebraic manipulation, I can say that sine squared theta is equal to 1 minus cosine squared theta. So I'm going to replace my first expression with sine squared theta. For cosecant theta, I'm going to say cosecant is the same as 1 over sine theta. Oops. So now, if I could do just a little bit of reduction, I can see that this is sine theta times sine theta, which is sine squared theta. So really, I can reduce one of those, and I'm left with simply sine theta. Coming up next, we're going to take a look at periodic and even an odd function properties.